What's going on, everybody? Is What's going on, everybody? It's Davey from the 80s, and you're now entering the Cinema Chop Shop, so park your ass right there. And while you're there, don't forget to hit the like, the share, and the subscribe button. Also, if you check the link below, you see a Patreon account. You click it, you can become a member. All you got to do is try recommend movies and music and trailers for me to react to. So click the link, homie. And today, we are reviewing the 2005 slasher by the name of House of Wax. Now, we know that there's a remake. This is a remake, and this movie has been remade a bunch of fucking times. I think it's called Mystery of the Wax Museum. And then the remake came with Vincent Price. And I think there's a remake after that. And then there's this remake right here. But I have to give credit to this remake in particular because it actually is a fun fucking remake. Now, in retrospect, when I first watched it, I thought it was cool, right? But later on in life, you know, when I saw the original, I was like, oh, man, fuck this remake, you know? I was one of those originalists. <laughs> so looking back at this movie... And watching it recently, it made me respect it a lot more. Again, this is one of those early 2000 movies. So it has a a band of misfits cast. And what I mean by that is there's a bunch of actors on here. Not really A-list actors. Uh, but you've probably seen them in various different roles throughout their career. Once you see them, you're like, oh, I know that motherfucker from somewhere. Usually that's how this shit goes with most horror movies. Especially them early 2000 ones. But I digress. Um... This movie is about a group of friends going on a road trip. They're trying to get to a football game. Uh, they camp out in a real suspicious area, you know, fucking white people shit. And eventually they're approached by this truck. They scare the truck driver away. And in the morning they find out that their car has been tampered with. So the guy's like, I'm not leaving my fucking car here. So I'm going to just go into, I'm going to just wait here for somebody to, to come pick this damn car up. Just come get me on the way back. You know, I'm going to just camp out here just on the way back. Come bring me a freaking belt, you know? And they're like, nah. And so his girlfriend stays, obviously. And what ends up happening is a weird, suspicious dude comes. And they end up... He gives them a ride into the nearest town. Which is... The main attraction of this town is the Wax Museum. Uh, the, there was a lady that lived there. She was the reason why the town had huge attendances. And she was the reason behind the... T she put the damn town on the map. And we learned that she passed away. And I guess her son is still at the fucking wax museum trying to keep on her legacy. But what you don't know is this motherfucker is a freak of nature. He's a twin that has been freaking dissected from his brother and it fucked up his face in the process. So he wears like a wax mask in order to conceal his face. What this mofo does is he captures real human beings, kills them, encases them in wax, and then poses them in his museum pretty dope you know and while you're watching this movie you really get to appreciate a lot of the little early cgi and how they mixed it with practical uh you know you like it, it's really cool when you're watching it now of course some of the cgi did look bad but i will say this whatever the fuck they did in that wax scene where they're running up the steps and the steps are melting and they're sitting in a room in the middle the bed the freaking bed's melting and they're trying to escape before the freaking wax house collapses on top of them. That shit was epic, bro. Like, watching that shit, it was really like, I was really like, oh my God. Like, the scenes, the set pieces and shit like that. It was so fucking cool. And Vincent, shout out to Vincent, who's a, that's a nod at Vincent Price, obviously. Um, Vincent's character's dope, dude. Like, he's a fucking menacing big motherfucker. And he runs around with these twin freaking knives and cuts people up. And everybody, I, the most iconic scene in this movie is Paris Hilton dying. Paris Hilton dying in this movie is exactly, is nah, coup de gras, you know. Everybody fucking loved that shit. I remember when she died, everybody in the movie theater stood up and started clapping. Because at the time, she was like one of the most fucking hated people in the world. Like, people couldn't stand her. I mean, today she's more tolerable because she's not like in your face as she was back then. But back then, Paris and Nicole Hilton, whatever the fuck her name is. 
Oh my God, they were so fucking annoying. Nobody did. Nobody liked them. Nobody liked them. So when she died in that movie, she deserved it. But now, like looking back in retrospect, she honestly didn't do a bad job in the movie. Like she wasn't really anything special. But at the same time, I thought that she was gonna be a fucking terrible actress in this movie. But like watching it, like she kind of played the like atypical role to a T, and it wasn't. Her acting didn't stand out to the point where I'm like, yo, like that shit's bothersome, you know? It it was okay. It was pretty good. Um, the acting in the movie overall isn't like it's gonna blow you away. That black kid, if I'm not mistaken, that motherfucker's from Cousin Skeeter. <laughs> Uh, what the hell is his name, bro? I got to find out this guy. But I'm going to tell you straight up that this movie um, this movie didn't make a lot of money. And it's crazy because I, I read that they um, that they pitched a prequel idea. And that, obviously, because the movie didn't do so good, the prequel wasn't going to come into fruitation. And if I'm not mistaken, the director of this movie, he... He's a um he's going to do Black Adam, I believe. He's going to be the director for Black Adam. So it's kind of cool in my opinion to see that this director came from like House of Wax and like now he's doing such a big production such as, you know, Black Adam. And I think he did The Jungle Cruise too. But um yeah, the black dude was on Hanging with Mrs. Mr. Cooper, Jamie Foxx show. Uh where else? What else? What else? I know this motherfucker was on some other shit. He was on Veronica Mars. Bro, I'm telling you, he was in Hanging with I, he was in that Cousin Skeeter show, dude. But why is in his show? I swear he was in that show. He was in some stupid show. He was in a kid's show. I just can't remember the name of it. But anyway, he was killing me in that movie, dude. He was trying to act tough and shit. He was trying to act like a player and shit. Like, I, I wasn't buying that shit. As soon as he died, I was like, that's what the fuck you get. Anyway, um, like I said, dude, House of Wax is actually one of those freaking remakes that you don't mind. And the reason why I'm saying this is because most people, including myself, trip out when they remake shit that honestly doesn't need to be remade. Like, motherfuckers be like, oh, I'm going to remake The Exorcist. Why? Why are you going to remake The Exorcist? I'm going to remake Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, eh, for like the second, third time? Okay, whatever. You know, I'm going to remake Friday the 13th. Eh, okay, whatever. You know, now the reboot sequel thing is becoming a hit. So, you know, that's catching the, on to the wave. But there's so many freaking cult classic horror movies that people forget about hell there's even just regular classic horror movies that people forget about house of wax is one of them and i think that honestly for a remake it's not that fucking bad like watching it and like now and appreciating it for what it is it's not fucking bad bro it's not a bad movie at all so that's my review that's what i think let me know if you agree or disagree whatever the case may be and you are here today for in the month of madness i believe day four let me know. I forgot which day we're on, but whatever. You already know what's in the title somewhere on the top. So come back tomorrow. You already know what it is. It's going to be another day of motherfucking madness. Adios.